I, you know, I've been accused, or I've accused myself of never listening to anybody. And, uh, <laughs> and, and um, about two weeks ago, I got a phone call from one of you, who I won't mention the name, Jake. And uh, <laughs> make sure that doesn't get mentioned. And uh, we were talking, we had a really good talk about different things, life and death and all of those things. And uh, and then he made a suggestion, which I'm, I'm usually not that open to suggestions, you know. Because when you got it all figured out, why why listen, you know. And, and he said, you know, week after week, we hear you get up and, you know, and you tell your stories and you talk about, you know, how we, our lives, uh, you know, can change if we follow Jesus and, and that's good and everything as far as that goes but he said you know there's a lot of people in, in uh, this church um, who God's working in their life but we never hear it and he said you know sometime uh, why don't you just have a chance for us to begin to share together and uh, hear from each other and there might be some value in that and of course I said well that's a stupid idea <laughs> and that's dumb. It's my job to get up and tell you my stories over and over again. And uh, and so um, so I put that away. I said, well, that's just Jake being crazy and making a, you know stuff. And uh, and then last night, as the snow was falling and people were calling me and saying, cancel the church. You know, and uh, we canceled it in our hearts. But um, I, I thought. Maybe this is God's timing. Maybe he's giving us a special experience together in which we can uh, have an opportunity to do this. So um, I, I want you to, um, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Psalm uh, 23. Uh, you probably all memorized this as children. Um, but let me read it for you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me. You rod your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, um, that's a great psalm because it reminds us of, of how God leads us. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would that be the presence of our enemies? Oh, yeah, the presence of, yeah, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, what, but when uh, my, my mom was dying a few years ago, um, I called her on a Monday and I said, uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm, gonna, I'm flying from Minnesota. I'll be with you in San Diego, you know, next week. And she goes, come Thursday. Uh, okay, so I did. Got there Thursday. And um, as we, um, I was sitting on the couch with her, holding hands, and I asked her, because uh, uh, she only had a little while to live, and she knew it. And so I asked her what she was most afraid of. And, and I think I told you this, her answer was, well, I'm, they tell me that at the end it will be so painful and everything, and I don't have any pain right now, but I'm afraid that when the pain gets so bad, I'll turn into a total bitch, and everybody will remember me that way because of how I was at the end. She said, I, I wish there was a way to avoid that. Um, and so that was her, uh, you know, biggest fear. And then um, I said, is there anything you want to tell me? Now, she's followed me being a pastor, you know, through all the years and ups and downs. And, and even she knew me before I was a pastor, actually. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they say she was at my birth, but, um, <laughs> present, but uh, she looked at me, and, and she never said this before, and she said, John, remember who the shepherd is. And I thought, yeah, 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 you know. No, remember who the shepherd is. It's not you. Remember who the shepherd is. And then she 
she passed away the next morning. Uh, and uh, and I always thought about that. I thought, wow, of all the things to say, that might have been the most significant one. To say, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I'll not be alone. He leads me. He protects me. He provides for me. He sets things up, even in the presence of enemies. Um, uh, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's kind of confirmation. And uh, so... I started thinking about this, and um, and I think that uh, every one of us has experiences in our life where we've um, discovered or realized uh, or recognized, maybe, uh, that the Lord is my shepherd, and He does provide. And for some of us, it's been a protection thing. For some, it's been a providing, um, sustaining, and for some it's been leading and guiding, and, and for some it's been um, standing with us in the presence of enemies, so all of these things. We've all got those stories. And, and, um, and as Jake said, you know, we never hear them. So what I'd like is, um, I'd like to go around today and give you a chance to share in what way have you discovered that the Lord is your shepherd? And, and you may have a long, strong, deep faith following Jesus all your years. Uh, you may uh, have not gotten to that point yet, and you're just on the beginning of a spiritual journey, and, and you're not sure exactly, you know, Jesus who. Um, it doesn't matter. How has, how has the shepherd uh, come to your, and to your life? And I've seen. Is that okay to talk about that today? Is that too personal, or is that okay? Okay. Um, so... Um, I'm not going to just pick somebody out of... Uh, it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Baron, stand here. I'll come to you. All right. Okay. So, what do you think? The, um, I was saying this the other day, actually, that, that uh, what a shepherd God has been for me sure. um, in terms of... Uh, I was in a marriage with... Uh, uh, before Andrea, a long time before Andrea, where... The person was uh, was not well emotionally, and had to had to uh, defend herself by making up stories about me. Uh, and unfortunately, being the nerdy fellow that I am, it was uh, it's uh, it's not something I could defend myself against. It's kind of like, oh wow, hmm, you know, who is this fellow? We don't even, you know, what what is he capable of? And people didn't really know just because I'm a little eccentric, um, and. They, you know, a lot of people bought into it, and uh, the courts bought into it in a lot of ways. Uh, and it was a place of, of, um, of destruction, personal destruction. Uh, and then it's been a long time rebuilding since that time, uh, and seeking peace and seeking positive things to, to build. Uh, and then I, am, I was uh, led into a relationship with Andrea. And it's where that has come to be a rebuilding. Hmm. And I'm really finding that I am able, I'm, I'm able to be myself. And uh, what, is that you know, what a gift is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not only freeing, it's affirming. So it is a, Again, a, a leading me from that area, that, that pit of despair, that pit of, of nihilism, into a construction, into a solid foundation. Um, it's almost like you've got a new life. Right, right, right. I feel very much like Job, yeah. parallels Job. I lost, I lost my, my children in the courts, uh, and now, of course, I have two beautiful stepdaughters, mm -hmm. very talented and yeah. intelligent and happy, and so and it's been a, been a fun thing. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Super. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? How's the... Yes. No, no, no. No? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He never lets anyone else hold it. Are you kidding? Me too. We'll talk about that on another <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> so... Um, I'm in my 50s, and I uh, have had an opportunity to 
reflect on how the internet is affecting how I think. And I've had this sort of blessing, and sometimes it feels like a curse, to, to actually envision a different, what I call an idea site, but to actually go back at how we look at how we make decisions based on the information we get on the web. You know, what could we do instead of this read a short blurb, click a button, buy thing sort of mentality? When we need to think about things that just, problems that are more complex than that, things that can't be resolved with that thought process. <laughs> and in fact, there I can think of a, a lot of um, cases where that's, like, that's true, you know, global warming, for example. So the blessing is that, um, that I just got to this point in my life where I could, could integrate what I thought across different disciplines and listen to what I, what I believe and, and, uh, and to trust myself to, uh, to make what I think needs to happen, happen, to make a prototype. And open up to the notion that it'll be like a, a jury trial, which which isn't rigged. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> we never do. No, you know, no. That's, and that's what makes life an adventure. Yes, yes. And so, um, so, so we, so a blessing for me. I'm I'm sort of a hybrid or a crossbreed between um, uh, someone who was not raised in the church, who then joined AA and became a Christian. And someone who was raised in the church and became an agnostic, <laughs> and so I wasn't raised in the you church. Crisscrossed in the yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be interesting to see where the path goes next in the in the the, uh, the crossbreeding yeah. that goes forward. <laughs> wow, that's great. Thanks for sharing. You know, it's interesting. You know that uh, the impact of AA and and how that that's led you in your own spiritual life. When when the uh, leaders for the young AA group that meets on Friday nights here came to see me, they said, now, how is your church going to respond to this? And I said, well, uh, half the church is in recovery, and the other half needs to be. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't care how they react to it. <laughs> so, Suzanne, how about you? Oh, boy. Oh, did I just call on her? Did yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> Waited for your hand to go up. I don't know if I have a story to tell. You don't have to have a story. Yeah. How, how have you experienced the shepherd? Well, uh, I've grown up in the church uh, all my life. Um, I was a little bit of a rebel. My sister and I, uh, I admit it, we would sometimes sneak out of Sunday school and run down to 7 Eleven. Oh I guess. my gosh, this, I didn't realize we were doing this. <laughs> I did, I did. Anyway, we, we never felt, my sister and I never felt really, really comfortable. I mean, we knew. Jesus was Lord, we knew all that, but we never felt comfortable in the church like this family. And um, my story was, until I came to UPC, um, I had been in a small group, a woman's small group, now we're jumping to my 20s. And what had happened was we read a book in a small group, uh, No Longer Strangers, Bruce Larson. And so I said, boy, this book speaks to me. I wonder who this person is, I'd love to hear a sermon. I said, well, you can. He's over in Seattle. It's like, oh my gosh, i got to go to Seattle. And so that's when I started UPC. That's where I met you and, and Bruce Larson. And, and in my journey, I've never looked back. And I don't go off of Sunday school money and <laughs> run to 7-Eleven anymore. But well, that's what <laughs> I'm relieved about that. <laughs> Too many slurries. Anyway, but yeah, I'd say I've had some wonderful friends and uh, I met Karen and, and such. And uh, he has blessed me beyond belief, um, so much so with um, my father passing, my father and being there for him and my mother and um, the friendships that I've had. This is cornerstone. Oh, it was huge. It was absolutely huge. I mean, I've been blessed so many times over, and uh, the friendships that have stayed, um, that continue. Um, I, I tell you, he's been good. He's been very good in my life. And so uh, I've been given everything I'm grateful. Thank you, Sharon. Seagulls, I think, are. Uh, <laughs> 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 Big ones. A little too late to chill. How
John, you, you can say no. Uh, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> you can give them the option. Yeah. Um, well, actually, what I want to say is more like a, a prayer thing. I almost said it this morning, but uh, uh, three weeks ago I was diagnosed with uh, uh, diabetes, and uh, so it's been a bit of a slave ride. And I've I've gotten to the point where I was uh, sort of setting my own uh, epitaph at being uh, the biggest curmudgeon that ever lived, and. Uh, I suddenly find that uh, going on insulin uh, got rid of all these things. So the Lord is good, and I, uh, my wife sent me to the doctor with, uh, I think it was eight things that were wrong with me, and uh, all of them went away in about 48 hours. Now I'm going to your doctor. <laughs> I'm going to have your wife make a list of what's wrong with me. <laughs> well, there's a few more things that are wrong with me. <laughs> Lord is working on my patients, and uh, mm-hmm. it's been a long process, and it's not over yet. But anyway, uh, it, it's just an amazing difference. And uh, like I say, all the things went away, so the so Lord is really good. And I don't mind sticking myself with needles because it, uh, the results are so good. So, so all the bad stuff went away, and you're still here. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. Not. <laughs> okay. Others. Wait, is that putting your hand up, or is that just scratching your face? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. If you move, it's like an auction. You know, you bought it. You just bought it. <laughs> Karen, we started the church in her home, by the way. So there's roots there. So how's the shepherd been your life? I can't touch that. You know, God is just always been there, and. You know, like Suzanne, UPC, John was a big part of me and coming back to my faith um, after being raised in a church that, um, well, talked about God's love, but really didn't show any other teaching what that means about grace. Um, and so um, I just saw a totally different, it was a totally different experience coming to UPC and Cornerstone. So, you know, all my, it's the, Things that have happened over the last you know, 30 years since um, we met UPC and you and Suzanne um, raising kids, and then especially the last couple of, of years um, since my um, marriage ended, and just going through that with my kids and then seeing them off to go to college. And um, you know, there's been just so many of those those little miracles that somebody. Susie or somebody mentioned this morning that, you know, it's not always the big things that show you that God's there and sometimes it's the little things and that's and sometimes it does. So I'm really looking forward now to, you know, my kids are grown and I feel like okay now I have some time to uh, give back and look for what you know God has in this for me. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. So Jared. So I'm giving you time to think while I walk over here, so I don't just bring it up. <laughs> there it's still. Yeah. How, how does the shepherd in sect in your life? Yeah, I um, I got to know Jesus when I was like four years old. Um, so I've always been a believer. But um, interesting things happen over the course of time. I, I my son has asked me a number of times, how do I get motivated? What am I interested in doing? And it's like. Essentially, I'm intrinsically motivated to do all kinds of different things. But about seven years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And over the course of time, I keep having different issues come up. And then suddenly, last April, I was struck by a heart attack and kind of died. And it's like, okay, and we won't get into the, you know, I was here for Bible study right night before. Did we cause it? That's really the question. <laughs> Come to Harbor, and then we have yeah. to the people who were trying to do that. <laughs> That's a new motto for the sign. <laughs> but at any rate, as a result of that, and as a result of some declines and stuff over over the, the course of the last year or so, I'm looking at this and going, so I'm motivated by sort of my own personal productivity. What can I achieve? And I can achieve less and less from a functional standpoint. So actually, just in the last couple of days, I've been thinking about, so how do I reset that? Should I have a, less expectations for what I can do? Just ratchet things down. I go, I can't do much. 
and I suddenly came to the revelation, I really can't do anything. Um, it's God that has all of the power. And it's like, I think what I need to do is to find um, what was in a, one of the first Bible studies I got engaged in as an adult. There's a Henry Blackley book called Experiencing God. And it talks about find where God is working and then work alongside. And God can then use your gifts and your talents. And that's what I'm hoping to do now. It's like, God, help me find a focus for my life, for my life where I can use your gifts. Um, that you've bestowed me with and work alongside you so that I don't need to lower expectations and go, oh, I can only do this yeah. because I never really could do anything anyway. Right. <laughs> so if it's all alert anyway, you exactly. just have to get out of the way. So it's like, I'll pray and I'll continue seeking God and try to work yeah. wherever you would have put me. Good. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Ernie. Actually, I had a question. Okay, Tim. <laughs> I'm going to run through the Stand up, Tim. Oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm Susie Allen, and um, yeah, so um, for uh, for like the first several years of my life, like for elementary school, I was uh, diagnosed as like um, being autistic and having ADHD, not very severely in either case, but um, like, you know, I felt myself like getting really afraid of different things, and so I went on like a certain medication or whatnot to help get rid of those fears, and now um we're starting to try and take me off the medication. And, uh, you know, like I still have like certain fears, like a fear of needles, for example. I just can't. Join me in that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they're actually good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I guess I'm trying to figure out is it, am I me when I'm on medication or am I me when I'm not? And Maybe you're you in both terms. I was sort of thinking about that <laughs> So, What's, it's a good, good issue. It's a good subject issue. Glad you're with us, by the way. Always good. Hey, Ernie. Yeah, John. Are, were you leaving or were you leaving? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> the Lord brought me here today to get these. Get these books signed. Oh. By. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ernie Martin, uh, UB Sear, Cornerstone, John Westfall, Fallwork. Uh, I see the Lord being my shepherd in a number of ways. Uh, some little things in life that I don't realize it, like probably the home at night. Uh, I live in a, a high zip code area, 98118, the most fat, very zip code in the nation, mm -hmm. but super high crime. My house was burglarized twice, twice recently. We even have gang guys mm -hmm. ripping off people off the line rail. But again, the Lord has been there when I not realize he's guarding me, guarding my home. And even on surf trips to the coast where uh, um, he's been there in terms of uh, me not falling asleep like a wheel, yeah. and home safe kind of thing. But at one time, a friend of mine went to the Super Bowl. That's his last Super Bowl, but uh, about 10 years ago. It was a good sunny day. We had a fun day. Came back the back route to uh, Post Canal. Passed by a tavern. He freaked out. He kept on going. Well, we heard in the paper about five minutes. There was a head-on collision. Uh, major just missed major. it. Yeah, yeah. So, so little things in life that I don't uh, realize or I'm grateful for that the Lord guides me in certain ways. Yeah. So, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Ernie. Okay, Dave. <coughs> You're volunteering. I'm volunteering. <coughs> I knew you wanted to to share. Wait, the term is volunteer. Yeah, I, I have a cold. So yes, excuse my voice. Right okay. um, How's the shepherd uh, work in your life? Well, I can certainly say God's been uh, very faithful to me, uh, in spite of me. Um, I've been faithless many times, but um, I keep coming back to to God's grace and how that um, that just enables me to have the strength to deal with you know the things in my life that I would not have chosen to have happened. Uh, uh, I, I'm thanking God every day for uh, just the simple things, you know, just for my next breath. Um, um, I've gone through times where I've uh, gone through some kind of deep waters uh, in my own struggles uh, and uh, God has never never despised me you know even through many failures and um, going down a lot of different rabbit trails uh, with my life um, and I, I had lunch with the, a good friend of mine yesterday 
And we were just talking about um, that you never really arrive at the place where God's taking you. It's, it's, a, it's a daily process and um, how it's important for us to um, just experience God moment by moment in our lives. And if we're doing that, he will be able to lead us and guide us. And, and so I've been experiencing God on a moment by moment basis. And I feel that he brought my wife and I here to, to this church. Uh, and I've just experienced just a, a new depth of relationship with people that I hadn't experienced for quite a while. Um, and it's been very healing and just uh, very sustaining for me. So, like I said, I had nothing to say. <laughs> Thanks for sharing it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Paul Clark. Uh, hi. Uh, I am unknown to you. I just started attending church here. Um, I'd like to share what the Lord has done for me uh, as a shepherd. I'm, I'm struck when I listen to everybody share. Those messages are all part of where my life has been at. For me, the, the Lord, you know, it's Paul, you're part of humanity. You know, and what I say to you, I'm going to say to everybody else. Um, Brother, what you just shared with the moment by moment faith, that is something that I've, I've said for a number of years now. I have a moment by moment faith that is relevant now. Uh, I thought I was unique with that. <clears throat> Obviously not. You know, um, Anybody know. else need a moment by moment faith <laughs> to get through? Yeah, okay. we're here among friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, my father's been faithful to me, and that is the the image that I am bringing, you know, taking to myself is the image of God the Father, and then thinking in terms of what does a father do? Uh, you know, uh, one that's actually whole and healthy and you know, a good father. And then going, well, that's God's attitude to me. You know, and how exciting. Um, the other thing that, you know, has come to mind is with all the experiences of my life, when has God ever been absent? When have I, when have I ever been abandoned? When did God ever say, oh, Paul, I can't look at that. You know, when you're done, I'll come back. I don't think so. <laughs> And I'm very grateful for that. So, so when you say that, you know, when is God the shepherd to to me? When is he not? Great, great issue. That's good. What circumstance, you know, what event? You've been there. Yeah. And it's just wow. So I'm very blessed. Um, okay, that's it. We're gonna keep going. I keep going. <coughs> They're checking it again up for our
it's it's brutal and it's him. And the world is not very kind to him. But the main reason I want to get up is, is to say that the Lord blessed me with a mother that's a saint. God commanded us to love everyone. And that's what she has done. No matter what's happened to her, who's crossed her, people that have stolen from her until she's getting old. She, she came to Sherry one night and said, can you, can you take care of this? I'm not even in trouble with I don't want to fall over the leather silver slippers. All the rest of it's that broke my car. But God said, love everyone. And not only did she love everyone, but she told everyone that she loved them. That's, that's a great legacy. legacy. That's a super legacy. legacy. Yeah, so she's, she's just a very loving heart, I guess. You know, I don't know. Uh, it's a great example that I don't live up to. You do, to your love of too. Okay. Okay, Jane, I'm going to go ahead. We're back here, and uh, I got I, I gotta ask because I just have never never known. So I'm so glad you're here. And uh, how's the shepherd? How's the shepherd uh, led you? Well, it's been a long journey, and he's even more tired of me than I am. <laughs> I think <laughs> um, it's been an interesting journey, and I'm really glad to be back here with John after many years of sort of wandering and stopping going to church altogether. I was dedicated in the Christian church, that went to the Sunday school in the Baptist church, went to Confirmation of Baptist in the Lutheran church, and then went to Confirmation in the Episcopal church, then went to the Presbyterian church, and of course John is the end all and be all of all, so I'm back here. You probably ought to focus on the shepherd. <laughs> My mom was right, by the way. <laughs> Well, God has been a shepherd in that he has stood by me when I have tried to leave several times, um, and even now question staying sometimes, but I know that without him in our lives, it's pointless, absolutely pointless. He guides our every step, he guides our every thought. Sometimes he slaps me across the face about that, because I don't do thoughts very well. <laughs> But he is standing with us all the time. And it's hard to remember that sometimes, but he's always there. Whether I think he's there or not, whether I sense his presence or not, I know that he's there. I know that for all of you better than I know that for myself, sure. by the way. But, but without him, there's no point. So I just, that's my story. Still I'm glad you're here. Thank you. We all are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we can continue these uh, conversations around the table as we have lunch today. I want you to uh, close your eyes. No, really, close your eyes. Don't <laughs> stare at me. And uh, I'm going to read Psalm 23 again. A picture of the shepherd, the real shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, be our shepherd. We need you. Sometimes we don't know how much we need you, and sometimes we really know how much we need you. So we pray that you would lead us.
guide us, make us rest, give us courage when we need to go forward, guide us, paths of righteousness. Lord, we ask that you would do everything that this psalm says you do. May we see it in tangible ways, day by day, in our life as you lead us. Thank you for the, the privilege of hearing from each other today. Hearing how you've led and work, how you need to lead and work in our lives. And uh, we are so grateful to be in the presence of these saints. So bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm.